So, this is gonna be a long video, but let's go. If you don't already know what an iceberg is, let me inform you. An iceberg theory is a style of writing that is meant to show the deeper aspects for things on the surface. The more common use of it is by creating iceberg theories of popular and interesting topics, uncovering the mysteries and theories about that specific topic or game going deeper and deeper into the lores and theories as the iceberg goes down. The further we go down, the creepier and darker it usually gets, getting more interesting and ominous. We start at the top with the sky and go further down until the abyss. So now, we are up to speed with the iceberg, I could start. There have been a lot of these theories on YouTube such as Super Mario 64 iceberg and the Adventure Time iceberg, but I was so shocked to find that there is no evidence of a Bojack Horseman iceberg. With such an impactful show, with such a deep story and many theories, I assume that there will be countless icebergs, but sadly no. With the show pretty much ending last year, there's so much information for me to work with. Now, like many icebergs, I'll be making this gauge. I'll be using cigarettes to show how accurate the theory is in my opinion. Short meaning not so accurate, and complete meaning 100% accurate, without a doubt. And obviously, there is some information that I forgot or didn't get to, so put those ideas in the comments below. And I'm still a little unfamiliar with the whole iceberg concept as a whole, so some may seem out of place, or you might not agree with it, but without further ado, I give you the Bojack Horseman Iceberg. Oh yeah, and before I start, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It would really help out. Also, spoiler warning. The Main Five. The main five are the main protagonists of the show. These include Diane Nguyen, Todd Schaff as Bojack Horseman, Princess Carolyn, and Mr. Peanut Butter. Even though the show is named Bojack Horseman after the character in the show, each of the main five characters have in-depth background and character development that really make them unique. No one character is truly more important than another. On the surface, Diane is an Asian American writer, Todd is a lazy freeloader, Bojack is a horse from a TV show. Princess Carolyn is a feline agent, and Mr. Peanut Butter is an actor. But as the story progresses, we start to see these characters' true colors, their life, their struggles, and their personalities. Each character starts to change and grow on us. Also, each character has their own interactions with other characters. For example, PC is the agent of all of them. Todd and Mr. Peanut Butter are co-workers slash friends, and Diane works with Bojack while married to Mr. Peanut Butter. These are just some to name a few, but it further creates a wider and more immersive story in the end. But at first, all you see are just five characters. Animals and humans. Maybe I should have said this one first, but in this society, animals and humans live together in a cross-species world. This is treated as normal in this world with animals and humans interacting. They do, however, make puns and gags throughout the show, showing that they are not unaware they are animals. Or maybe it's a society of humans and furries, and for some reason, the furry culture has become very popular or something. I don't know. The intro changes. The intro of the show changes constantly. This change could be a character being in one version and not being in another, from the entire background being completely different. Something is consistent though. It is that one scene of the setting changes every season and Bojack does pretty much the same movements the house scene changes depending on who's in Bojack's house during that time, changing from Todd to Wanda to even sometimes nobody. The intro is definitely one of the many cool elements of the show and it's fun to see what's there and what's gone. Bojack was in a TV show. The show starts with our character Bojack Horseman, and when he is introduced, one of the first things we learn is that he is from a TV show called Horsin' Around, a light-hearted family sitcom created by Bojack's buddy Herb Kazaz. This seems fine at first, but it ends up being a large aspect of his character and is negatively impacted from this later in the story. The show is his first character trait. Mr. Peanut Butter had four wives. As the show progresses, we get to see all the past of Mr. Peanut Butter. It is shown that he actually had four wives in total so far. First was Katrina who was characterized as being emotionally abusive and neurotic. Next is Jessica Biel, a fellow actor but is obsessed with her celebrity status. 
third, we got Diane, the most important of the three so far, and is characterized as being intelligent but misunderstood. And finally, we have Pickles. She's the waiter from Elefante, is now dating Mr. Peanut, although these two seem to be even more apart than Diane and Mr. Peanut Butter because of the age gap and different interests. Mr. Peanut Butter and Pickles are around 20 years apart, and because of Mr. Peanut Butter's indecisiveness and Pickles' full scent attitude, <laughs> they later split up. In the end of the show, Mr. Peanut Butter is not with anyone, but that doesn't mean he can't have a fifth try. Bojack is an alcoholic. It's said many times throughout the show that Bojack is an alcoholic. He constantly drinks, and one of the many gags in the show is how much he drinks. This is first treated as something comical for laughs and giggles, but later turns grim. He later goes to therapy and is healed from being an alcoholic and is sober. Todd is asexual. In the beginning of the show, we never see Todd in a relationship or any sexual adventures, but later it is clarified that Todd is asexual. This brings us into a journey of Todd's new found asexuality, and we learn about different orientations. A main thing is that Todd is asexual, but still wants a girlfriend or a partner. He starts with Emily, but later, when he realizes that Emily isn't right for him because she is sexual, she later finds Yolanda to be much better match. She is also asexual and Todd finds it better until he realizes that she wasn't good for him either. Finally, he makes an asexual dating app and finds his new girlfriend, Maude. PB Livin. This is the company that Mr. Peanut Butter and Todd founded in the show and its main purpose is to create random companies that do affect the story in some way. This company founded things like Halloween in January, Smoothies, and Todd creates Disneyland while working in PB Livin. It's not really mentioned after that, but it is a foundation to Todd and Mr. Peanut Butter's long-lasting friendship. He also kidnaps, I mean brings, his account in Oxnard along for the ride, but he really isn't too into it. Honeydew. Honeydew's nasty. <laughs> Mr. Peanut Butter is not oblivious. In the show, it is constantly suggested that Mr. Peanut Butter will be that cliche, stupid, funny guy in the show. But later, we realize that he is completely aware of Bojack's antics and is now seen more like the hero of this story. This is backed up by the episode Let's Find Out, where they have a conversation to each other in a game show, and eventually they resolve with a kiss. Kill the kiss cam. Oh, if only I'd had a kiss cam for Catcher in the Rye. Todd joins a cult. Todd joins an improv comedy club. At first it seems fine, but we are hinted later that this may be a cult. This is especially backed up by one of the members, Brian, being exiled and possibly killed. Diane gets an abortion. There's a whole episode dedicated to Diane's abortion and how it revolves more around others than herself. This is a real good symbol and honestly a reflection to real world examples of protests on abortion. Um, the episode has Sextina Aquafino lying about having an abortion because Diane actually put it on Sextina's social media account. The episode ends with Diane getting the abortion and it seems almost forgotten in the end of the show. Bojack's parents. Bojack's character is mainly shaped by his parents. As the story progresses, we are shown aspects of Bojack's early life as a kid that contribute to his image today. His parents were emotionally abusive and told Bojack that he was a mistake. The mother Beatrice Horseman is the worst out of the two with her hurtful remarks and mistreatment of her son. This will later haunt him in his life and make him resent his parents, especially his mother. Joelle Clark is British. Joelle Clark, the actor of Olivia in Horse and Around, sounds British in Herb's funeral. I just flew in across the pond, and I don't know which end is up. Hey, this might be a stupid question, but were you always so British? Even though in the flashback she clearly never had it, was it all an act and now she is showing her true voice because she doesn't care? Or is Bojack's memory that bad because other characters like Sarah Lynn don't seem to notice it? Diane gets chunky. <laughs> Hold him all white. Hold him all white. Diane gets real chunky in the end of the show. After getting a divorce from Mr. Peanut Butter, she moves to Chicago and dates a guy named Guy. Slowly, as the show progresses, she becomes bigger and bigger. There are lots of shots of them in the same restaurant eating. 
the food doesn't seem so healthy, so it probably had a cause on our weight. Ethan Around Ethan, another character in the show, is trying to start his own show called Ethan Around. Bojack agrees, and Ethan goes to Hollywood to do the show with Bojack when Bojack's manager at the time, Anna Spanakopita, says no. He goes back to his home and gets another call from Bojack that he wants to do the show again. It isn't shown, but is hinted that Ethan quits his business and goes all into the movie. They started shooting until Bojack realizes it's not for him. He leaves the show, and we never really hear about it again. Erica. Erica is the character Mr. Peanut Butter calls out for whenever he is in a party or a gathering of some sort. I want to talk to you. Erica! How are you looking so beautiful? I'm it is mainly as a means to take Mr. Peanut Butter out of the picture, but we still don't know who Erica is. All we know is that she may be seriously disfigured, but we don't know for sure. Hollyhock. Hollyhock's character is very interesting and important and mysterious to the show, like her full name. Hollyhock Mannheim Mannheim Guerrero Robinson Silberschlag Sung Fonzarelli McQuack. Oh Jesus. Hollyhock has eight fathers. We do meet them all, but we don't know them personally, except they are all mad at Bojack, which is the only aspect of them we know about really. Although Bojack and Hollyhock are related. Early in the show, the characters thought that Bojack was her father, but it is later realized that she is just a half-sister because of Sugarman Horseman's relationship with Henrietta. She'll be a reoccurring character in the story and one of the only positives in Bojack's life. Bojack dyes his hair. It is revealed in the episode The Face of Depression that Bojack dyes his hair. He is now more accepted of himself and keeps the dyed hair for the rest of the show, but it truly shows how he has been lying to the audience in a sort of a way. In the beginning he is a young narcissist, but now he looks old and is more accepting of others. Dr. Chan Bojack ruins Dr. Chan's life. He is the therapy horse that helped Bojack become sober. It is revealed that he is actually not a doctor, but instead his name is literally Doctor, just like Mr. Peanut Butter's name is Mr. Dr. Champ was a past drinker that became sober and is now working as a therapist, although Bojack ruins his life by smuggling an alcohol, and Dr. Champ accidentally gets drunk by drinking it. Later, Bojack finds him in a bar where he pretty much remains for the rest of the show. Margot Martindale Character actress Margot Martindale is an actual person and the character is played by her. This is pretty well known, but it is a cool element of the show. She is also not just a one-time character, but instead a pretty big reoccurring character that changes the plot in many ways. Wanda is over 50. Wanda is one of Bojack's girlfriends and worked for major broadcasting network until they split and she moved to Detroit where she works and lives now. Although the main thing about her is that she was in a 30 year coma, so this makes her around 50 or 50 years older. During this time Bojack was around 50 as well, but does Wanda count as a 50 year old or more like a 20 year old because she still acts like if she was still in the 80s. Wanda is never really mentioned after they break up though except for the last season where it is stated that she fell into another coma and became the president of Gronkle, whatever that is. Bojack is broke. Bojack eventually loses his house and is pretty much broke. He struggles to survive, but he's now living with Mr. Peanut Butter, but it is hard to see how he will recover after he gets out of jail. He doesn't have that much money and will probably have to live with Mr. Peanut Butter for a while. Princess Carolyn is not a real agent. In the beginning of the show, she is shown as this amazing agent that can do anything and get anyone a job. She definitely proves this in later episodes, but is she really an agent? It is shown in the later episode in season 3 that she only got the job because her boss Marv quit after realizing that being an agent was a waste of his life. PC takes this place but starts to realize why Marv quit his job. But is she really an agent? We never see her get hired or truly promoted from an assistant. It makes us wonder if PC is even an agent but she proves to show that she is more than qualified for the task. Corduroy Jackson Jackson This character was a fellow actor in Secretariat. Bojack and him would often talk until he gave Bojack his autoerotic asphyxiation kit. Bojack tries it, but doesn't like it. So when he goes back to Corduroy's trailer, finds him hanging by the neck pants down with a lemon in his hand. 
This is most likely due to the fact that Bojack gave him different ideas of what he could do to pleasure himself. This brings up another point though. If he was still alive, when Bojack came back to bring the box, would he have died either way? Crossbreeding. It is never truly stated, but it is clear that there's crossbreeding of species in this show. This is proved by Sarah Lynn's parents or Hollyhock. Is this what started the people of this world? Were the humanoid animals created by early humans committing bestiality? If so, was Shane Dawson horsing around with his cat in order to make Princess Carolyn IRL? Or are they a product of Animorphs? We will never know. White Whale Jeremiah White Whale and the entire White Whale industry is very corrupt and sinister. In one episode, they talked about how White Whale straight up killed a man for going to the bathroom too many times. Oh, him, sure. But that was no accident. I killed him. What? I murdered him. He was not charged to murder because Congress passed a law that billionaires can murder. The society is pretty much like a pay to win game. This shows how corrupt the government and the economy is in the society. I don't understand why this isn't really talked about that much later in the show because they could literally kill anyone they want. They eat meat. In the episode Chickens, we learn that the people in this world do eat meat. And it's strange how in a society with animals, they eat meat, but it is truly clarified in this episode. Pretty much at birth, they are chosen to be smart chickens or edible chickens by pumping them with juice, making them dumb to the point where they can't be in the open world. This feels the same as an old mental institution, and it just makes them more grim. But this brings us to the question of, do they eat humans in this world? Because cannibalism seems totally acceptable if the animals were made to be eaten. Plus, humans are treated like any other animal in this show. Maybe there's some human meat on those menus in the restaurants and we don't see them. Filbert is Bojack. It is somewhat clearly shown how Filbert is supposed to be an accurate portrayal of Bojack. This goes so far to the point where Bojack never takes the costume off and can't recall if he's acting or just living. This is peaked when he almost strangles and kills Gina Cassador. Filbert is supposed to be a way for Bojack to see how he really is, and this is made clear when we see Bojack meet with his inflatable self. Bojack realizes he is Filbert. Honey Sugarman gets a lobotomy. Beatrice's father forces her mother to get a lobotomy after she goes insane. She goes nutty when she learns that her son Cracker Jack died in war. So. She gets a lobotomy. You can still see the scar on her head and ever since then she acts like a complete robot. No emotion and sounds like a zombie. This is definitely a major factor in Beatrice's character. Bojack is close with Sarah Lynn. This is definitely one of the darkest events in the show where Bojack and Sarah Lynn um, does a thing. It is very weird and creepy to think about it because Sarah Lynn did it with her guardian. It is even worse because Bojack is known to be the fatherly figure in her life, but the age gap and the added factor that she is already struggling from drugs, you can't really see both of them the same again. Hollyhock overdoses on drugs. The event transpired very slowly when Bojack's mother was adding drugs into her coffee until she overdosed and passed out. This makes Hollyhock very scared of Bojack and it's all Beatrice's fault. Hollyhock moves back with her fathers and isn't really allowed to see Bojack until after she goes to college. This makes further questions of if she was really happy with being with Bojack, or was it just the drugs? Princess Carolyn's infertility. In this story, we learn about Princess Carolyn's wanting and craving for a baby. Although, when she tries naturally, it always becomes a miscarriage. Even though this might be chance or just DNA, one theory suggests that it might be that it's the fault of her necklace that she always wears on her neck. PC thinks this necklace is gold, but we later learned that her mother was lying and it was just gold plated. This theory is that the necklace is actually gold plated lead and lead is said to have properties that can weaken and kill developing fetuses if exposed for too long. This would support PC's infertility, but I don't think this one is accurate because her mother had the necklace before and she had many children. PC is most likely just infertile or has really bad RNG. I lost the Baby. to RNG, dude. What? Herb Kazaz dies. Herb Kazaz was Bojack's partner in horsing around. We see that he had cancer and was barely alive. Bojack goes to visit him, but never seems to have a resolve. 
In the end, we hear that Herb recovered from cancer but was hit by a peanut truck and killed from an allergic reaction. This death was treated as a joke early on in the show, but we will later see that this joke had major repercussions for Bojack. Sarah Lynn overdoses. Sarah Lynn is another character that died in this show, but this one might be even more drastic or even the most important death in the entire show. This is because the primary death was from Bojack. Would Sarah Lynn still be alive if Bojack wasn't her guardian? Most likely, and it would just prove how Sarah Lynn is negatively impacted by Bojack. Beatrice's Dementia and Henrietta Beatrice Horseman contracts a bad case of the Dementies and can't remember for the life of her. She sees herself as a child and goes back in time to experience her memories in twisted and morbid filters. We are introduced to older characters in her memories, but one character that we hear but never see is Henrietta. In Beatrice's mind, when she sees Bojack, she can only see Henrietta. But when we look into her mind, Henrietta is a girl and her face is scribbled out. As the audience, we have no idea what she looked like, but we do know she is the maid for the Horsemans and is also Hollyhock's mother. Such a mysterious character that we never find out. Who is Henrietta? Yes. Some think that Henrietta is actually a character that we already met, but this is still pretty unclear. His final trip. In the episode The View from Halfway Down, we are in Bojack's mind as it is slowly dying. This episode is definitely one of the most darkest in the show, but there are many questions that you can have from watching this episode. I will only go over the main two in my opinion, and the first one is, what is inside the black void door? Is it the past trauma and pain from this character's leaving his mind, and soon he will go in because of his inevitable death? This must be the place where they finally rest out of Bojack's mind. But the main question is about the Cardinal in the beginning of the episode. This is the first and only time we see this character. There are many theories on this Cardinal, but I find the most accurate to do with Hollyhock's suicide. This is because earlier, before the experience, Hollyhock started alienating herself, seeming to become more depressed and even changing her numbers so that no one would call, especially Bojack. The Cardinal is a symbol of a departed loved one, and the only true loved one here is Hollyhock. This might point to a fact that she is close or already at her death. Also, we never see her after this trip and she's not present in the last episode. The writers do like to put these types of symbols and metaphors into the show so this isn't that much of a stretch. No character has a tail. I didn't notice this on my first watch but after researching for this video I learned that one of the rules that the animators had was no tails. I swear that I've seen a tail on a character, but I guess not. This might be something like the Mandela effect. But it's kind of weird though. Bojack dies in the intro. As I said in the sky, the Bojack Horseman intro changes constantly, but another thing that doesn't change is the falling at the end. At the end of the intro, Bojack falls into a pool or over the balcony. People believe that this is the foreshadow of his death of drowning in a pool. This seems very plausible because this does happen when Bojack drives his car into his pool. Bojack tries to accept his death, but Mr. Peanut Butter saves him. Bojack might try this again in the future, but seems a little far off now. Although, they do hint about drowning many times in the show, through paintings and just speech. Mr. Peanut Butter is manipulating everyone. This theory is about Mr. Peanut Butter and it's that Mr. Peanut Butter is just playing an act. This theory by Reddit user u slash Moral Mountain Lady suggests that he doesn't just act like an idiot but instead deliberately does things in order to benefit his career such as ruining Bojack or controlling women. Sure, this could be plausible, but still unlikely because Bojack ruined his own career and it is made pretty clear to the audience about that. And he looks genuinely sad about losing his wives. Sad dog. Diane dies in a car crash. In the episode INT.sub, we find two therapists talking about their patients and Diane is interpreted <laughs> as Princess Diana. This theory suggests that because Princess Diana died in a car crash, so too will our Diane. This is because the last shot of Princess Diana in Bojack is in the car under a bridge and we never see her after that. This may be a foreshadow or a symbol of that character dying. 
Hollyhock Suicide. I thought this would be better here, but Hollyhock Suicides personally doesn't seem reasonable. Even though she looks very sad near the end of the show, I still believe she wouldn't do it because she has eight loving fathers that she knows would not be able to recover from her loss. The cardinal could have been a symbol of her, but was pushed out of the house, so maybe it was Bojack removing and canceling Hollyhock's death. But that was still in Bojack's mind, so maybe it was just Bojack thinking she might die. The Five Stages of Grief The main five represents the five stages of grief. Mr. Peanut Butter is the first stage, denial, because he can't accept that Diane has changed. Second is anger, which matches with Diane because she holds constant anger towards her family and others. Third is bargaining, which is PC. She's an agent and agents bargain. Fourth is depression, which is Bojack. And that's pretty much his biggest character trait, so I'm pretty sure that one's right. Fifth is acceptance, which is Todd, because Todd is the only real character that has a true resolve and a happy ending. And he is finally acceptant of his parents and friends. This is honestly one of the most plausible theories in this entire video. All of these characters can be clearly represented by their stages, so I do believe this one to be kind of true. It is all a joke. This theory is that the entire show is a joke. The joke being, a horse walks into a bar, and the bartender asks, why the long face? You get it? Because he's a horse. This is debunked because they don't really say this, although it could still be a joke, but the punchline is not supposed to happen. Like, for example, he's supposed to walk in, and you personally are supposed to ask, why the long face? <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. But yeah, that was pretty much the entire BoJack Horseman iceberg. Um, I probably missed some ideas, but let me know in the comments down below. And I'm probably not going to do a recap video like most people, because I just don't feel like it. And these are just like the ideas that I came up from the top of my head. And if you like this video, you should definitely go check out my other videos. I have a whole variety of stuff. It's pretty much like a pick and choose buffet. So I urge you to subscribe to the channel. And if you like the video, drop a like. It would help me with the YouTube algorithm, and it would really mean a lot. But yeah, thanks for watching. My name is Dane10, and I'm out. Peace.